Hey, what's going on guys? This is Keda here and here is my WVC 1200 micro grid tie inverter. So it is grid tied solar inverter. It works pretty great actually. I have old inverter which is still working from few years actually. I have bought this inverter just about a month ago and I have this problem right here. So the problem is that all of the DC input ports are shorted. So let me show you that. As you can see, we are getting very low resistance. And this is same for all ports. All of the MC4 connectors are shorted. I don't know how it happened actually. But uh, when I'm just testing my voltage onto this inverter, I have found uh, that there is a uh, no voltage onto my solar panels and my solar panels are shorted for uh, very long duration but uh, there is no damage happened to my solar panels so that's a good thing but anyways here is what inside you will found there are lots of screw guys okay so inside it you can see there are 50 volts uh, 1500 microfarad capacitors these are eight capacitors connected in parallel and they have used the pcb fuse for uh, each mc4 input connectors all of the negative input are connected at one place right here and uh, each of the positive wire is connected with this fuse to the capacitors and here are four transformers here is the dc current measurement and power adjustment circuit i think it has to do with a maximum power point tracking uh, mechanism of this uh, inverter and on to the upper side you can actually found the connector to reprogram this inverter here is the ac current transducer to measure the ac output current this is the ac output circuit so as you can see there are pretty thick cables so here is the 10 amp fuse for the inverters output there is a chance to make this inverter 120 or 230 volts so i think uh, you just have to switch this uh, things and make a changes into your program and uh, on to the output side here we have a big chunky inductors here four of them four of the capacitors that's pretty much it about this side and uh, if you open this back panel again with many screws what you have with the guts of this inverter here are the lots of n channel mosfets here and n channel mosfets onto here also and here we have the diodes all of this MOSFET you are seeing right now is just covered with this Kapton tape, Kapton like tape and put it on to like this and, and there is a thermal paste so that's the only way they can dissipate the heat from this side and uh, on to this side actually for this these MOSFETs they have used this uh, rubber thermal pad to dissipate heat because they have to insulate the drain terminals of this uh, MOSFET here is the microprocessor of this inverter it is a microchip one I have inserted all of the parts numbers of this inverter in the description below as you can see there is a pretty thick track for AC input it is uh, pretty interesting that they have made this inverter in such a small form factor and <laughs> I mean uh, for this 1200 inverter they haven't even used a pan to cool you know uh, these things can also be uh, used in uh, outdoor environments so they should not expose to outdoor environments so let's uh, just focus on to our problem guys so for this dc input the voltage comes out here and goes into this capacitors so there is a possibility of shorting out this capacitors but uh, there is a no sign of a damage or puffing or explosion of this capacitor so this looks actually good 
Also, there is a no sign of a damage onto this transformers. One thing uh, you have to spot on is this MOSFETs. Now, if I just show you the MOSFETs part number, you can found this is a N channel IRF. 317 mosfet data sheets are in the descriptions anyways let's check out uh, whether these mosfets are any good or not okay friends so here is the gate terminal drain and source terminal so let's check the resistance between drain and source it is a uh, good there is a uh, no short there let's check this one okay so we are getting a 9.8 ohms resistance maybe it's a body diode let's check in reverse direction okay so it's not a body diode actually you can see we are getting 10 ohms so this is 40 di uh, 40 mosfet this is good this is the 41 again let's check in reverse direction also okay so this is a faulty one i think there is a consecutive diodes which are faulty ones so let's test this one i have skipped one you can see it is shorted out okay guys so we have figured out the problem i think okay friends so let's see what are the parts they have used in this inverter so that might be helpful for if you have to replace the parts so for the dc input stage they have used uh, irf 3710 n channel mosfets uh, the ratings for uh, this are 100 volt 57 amps and they are 200 watt ones so these 16 mosfets right here are 30 nm 60 nd and uh, they are rated for 600 volts and uh, 25 amps and onto this upper side onto this uh, plate right here they have used this uh, diodes these ultra fast diodes which has a part number of cq1308 these are uh, 20 amps and 600 volts diodes okay guys uh, so here i have found a pretty interesting circuit uh, so onto this potentiometer it is uh, um, labeled as a uh, AC output voltage so there is a possibility that you can upgrade this inverter for years but uh, I don't know how to figure out the output voltage because you have to connect this inverter with the uh, AC output voltage but anyways it is pretty interesting and on to the front side under this thick DC input cables you can see there is a DC current so you can actually adjust or the calibrate the DC input currents uh, so this is for the calibration you shouldn't have to touch uh, unless and until the MPPT is tracking wrong so you can uh, tweak yourself please post your questions in the comments down below if you have any problem regarding this inverter and as always thanks for watching guys goodbye